Will you marry someone from Kerala or Australia? Do, do you still have pains in your injured area? This is actually a really good question. What's the worst thing you see in India? I think one of the saddest things I've seen is... Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. 100,000 subscribers special. That is just crazy. I can't believe in like a matter of months we've hit 100,000 subscribe, uh, uh, subscribers and it's all thanks to you guys. So I wanted to uh, do something special. We're going to do a Q&A today. I'm also going to be doing a meetup in the next few days in Kochi. So make sure you uh, look out for that. I'm still organizing the dates. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> dates and like the location and everything. So we're just going to have to uh, figure that one out. But make sure you stay tuned on YouTube and Instagram to know the uh, exact locations and timings. But uh, also for all the TVM people, the people in Trivandrum, I'm not forgetting about you guys. I will be back in Trivandrum at least once before I uh, leave back to Australia. I want to see my surgeon again. And uh, yeah, during that time, we'll definitely do a, uh, another meetup in Trivandrum. So I'm not forgetting about you guys in Trivandrum. But uh, yeah, let's just get straight into the questions. I did one of these uh, subscriber specials with uh, my parents for 50,000 subscribers. But uh, today, we're doing an even bigger achievement. 100k. Silver play button, baby. Can't wait to uh, get back home and do an unboxing of that. That's just great. Seriously, thank you guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have a ton of questions here. I uh, put out a little thing on Instagram asking people what kind of uh, questions they want answered and they sent me their questions. But uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it, guys. This is just going to be like one clip. Everything I say is going to be added into it. So uh, let's do this. From, uh, I'll put all the questions up on the screen. Bro, next, what gadget will you buy for your YouTube channel? I think I'm going to buy a MacBook, uh, an Apple Mac, because my uh, computer's starting to get a little bit slow. It takes a couple of hours to render a video, whereas a Mac only takes like 10 minutes. So I'm thinking that's the, uh, the new uh, technological piece that I will be buying, and then potentially a new camera. I'm filming this on a Canon G7X, it's a lot better quality than my uh, GoPro that I use for daily filming, but it doesn't have like stabilization. That's why it's good for still shots. So yeah, next gadget will uh, most likely be uh, a new laptop or more hard, hard drives because I have a lot of footage. I always need new hard drives. But yeah, definitely a Mac is going to be coming in the future. You are literally the most positive person I've ever seen. Please give some tips to stay positive. I get this question a lot because obviously what happened with my uh, hand and uh, me still being able to be positive, I mean I think it just comes down to being like grateful for like the life that I've been given and you know me being alive still despite having such a horrific accident. I mean so many things could have gone wrong that night. I almost bled to death. I mean I was told that I'd just have my pinky when I arrived at hospital but like I pretty much have like a fully functioning hand. It's not going to be the same as it always used to be, but this is literally the best outcome that I could have ever asked for. So I'm just so stoked for that. I'm so happy. And uh, yeah, it's just like grateful. Like there's so many people like that have it worse than me, even like people that have it worse than you. Like if you're watching this, you have access to social media. You know, there's like 2 billion people in the world that literally don't have access to the internet. So just be grateful for what you have. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Gratitude. That is my uh, one tip. When will you come to Wynard? I've been getting a lot of questions about my next locations. And uh, guys, I don't plan anything. I was literally meant to be in Thrissur like yesterday, but I decided to come to Aleppi. So uh, I'm, I'm so like, I have a rough idea of what I'm gonna do, but nothing ever goes to plan. So I just do it day by day. With that being said though, I will be visiting Wynard. I will be visiting North Kerala. I'll go from Kochi. Uh, I'm going to stay in Kochi for a few days, probably when you see this video, I'll be on the way to Kochi. I'll stay there till maybe the 16th, then I'll go to Thrissur, Kalika, Wynod, Kanur, and maybe some places in between. So Wynod I'm definitely going to be visiting because it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, Nico was there and he just put some of the most amazing content out and I really want to visit there because like, I love mountains, man. I really, I love water and mountains. They're gonna be my favorite things ever. What's your favorite place and food in Trivandrum, Alia? 
My favorite food, Kerala Parota. I had that twice today for breakfast and dinner. I know it's so bad for you, so I'm trying to like uh, not eat it as much. But our uh, favorite place in Trivandrum, Kim's Hospital, baby. That, no, like I say that as a joke, but like that was actually like probably my favorite place. They literally saved my life there, and it means like a lot to me that place. So, but if you want like an answer to like a proper location, <laughs> maybe like. Uh, Kovalum. Kovalum's quite pretty. If it wasn't so touristy, it'd be much better, but, uh, yeah. You know, there's so many places, like, along that coast in Trivandrum. Varkla, that's pretty beautiful as well, and that's still in Trivandrum, just on the edge. Bro, will you come to Calicut? As I said, yes. Uh, we'll be visiting in the next few weeks. So, be prepared, North Kerala. We're coming for you. Favourite food item of Kerala? Kerala Prota. What inspired you to create content on YouTube? Um, there's sort of two answers to this question. I was creating like videos before I started traveling just because I was like looking at these YouTubers and they're like, wow, like this is the life I want to live. I want to be able to do that. But then I sort of like got into the uh, travel bug. I started watching all these YouTubers travel and uh, see other parts of the world. I'm like, well, these guys seem like they're having an amazing time. Why can't I do that? I mean, there's no reason that I can't do it if they can do it. So I gave it my shot and uh, it's worked out. But yeah, that's, that's my inspiration. Just like, I don't want any regrets when I'm about to die. You know, it's inevitable. We're going to die. Uh, and I don't really want to uh, like sit there and be, oh, I wish I went traveling instead of going to university, you know, but thankfully it's worked out. Favourite batsman and bowler? Batsman, Steve Smith. I mean, how can you not love him? I mean, obviously the sandpaper incident. But the good thing with him in that incident in comparison to Warner, Warner like denied it at all. Like denied it all. And just like was such a dick about it. Whereas Smith was like, yeah, I messed up. He took the like one year ban and now he's back and he's just performing like an absolute legend. And bowler, I love Mitchell Stark. He's, he's a beast. And Nathan Lyon. He's really nice. Nathan Lyon, Gary Lyon, he, uh, he's really nice. My sister's met him a few times and he, and she said he's really nice. Whereas like some of the other cricketers, like the captain, Tim Payne, apparently like big dickhead. My sister works at the SCG, like the Sydney Cricket Ground, so she meets all the cricketers. She met Sachin Tendulkar the other day. But yeah, she says that Tim Payne's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a, you know, not a nice person. Is this still in focus? All right, cool. Do you have any plans to come to Mumbai? Yes, definitely. The fir I think the first place that I'll visit outside of Kerala will be to Mumbai because that place is just a joy of just fun. So much action there. Like you got Bollywood, you got just awesome street food. It just seems like a really cool place. I haven't visited there before. So uh, yeah, definitely gonna visit that as soon as I uh, Leave Kerala maybe next month. I'm not sure, but like I said, I literally have no plan. I don't know what I'm doing. What's well, one thing you miss about Australia? Uh, definitely my friends and family. It's like pretty difficult traveling alone at times. I mean, I, it's good because I have like, why is this not focusing at all? <laughs> it's good because I have like a uh, like a hobby to do. Like I can go out and film a video. I can edit. I can respond to messages. And then, like, I get to talk to a ton of people on social media here in India. So, like, I pretty much have a new family here. But, like, obviously, I'm missing my best friends at home. I'm missing, like, that human-to-human -human contact. And just, like, little things, like, just hanging out with them, having a laugh. But, you know, you've got to sacrifice things if you want to do others. Like, I'm not going to be able to travel and have my friends next to me. Like, you know, it just doesn't work like that. You've got to, like, realize what you want realize the things that you're going to have to give up for that and then uh, put it into action and actually do it. Where are you heading after India? So I can stay in India for three months until I need a new visa. So I'll be here till like the end of April, I think that's when it ends. And then uh, depending on where I am, if I'm in Kerala, I'll go to Sri Lanka. If I'm in the Northeast, which I plan on visiting, I will uh, I'll go to Nepal or like Bhutan or some of those like countries above like in the Himalayas in the northeast maybe Nepal but uh yeah that'll be after uh India and then I'll sort out another visa for India 
what inspired you to become a YouTuber slash travel vlogger? Like I said, I saw all these people like living the dream of uh, traveling and just, I mean, that's just sick. Their job is to literally travel. So I was like, yo, I'm going to do that. And uh, yeah, it worked out. You are doing something big at this age, which we can even dream. What is your inspiration? My inspiration is not to have any regrets. So as I said, I'm going to die eventually. And if I'm going to have a regret on my deathbed, that's probably the worst thing ever because you can't really change it. Thankfully, I have no regrets at this stage. But uh, yeah, and also, I think I realized that university or college wasn't really the, an option for me. I knew what I wanted to do, and that's like film videos. And uh, like, I get actually a lot of questions asking what my job is, what my education is, will I go for further education? And I'm definitely not gonna go to college. Like, the thing that I'm doing right now on YouTube, the way you learn the most about social media is actually just doing it like I am. You can't go to college and uh, learn how to be a YouTuber. It doesn't work like that. There's not courses for that. You just gotta like do it. You learn the most from actually doing something. But it will at least in my situation. So it may be different for others. Obviously, if you're becoming a doctor, you gotta go to college. Like, you know, that's, an, that's <laughs> obvious. <laughs> but for me, like doing this, uh, why is this focusing? For me, doing this like sort of entrepreneurship um, thing, college is not really, uh, a, you know, a benefit for me. You get a lot of debt. It's like, I think seventy thousand dollars for like a whole degree. You know, seventy grand debt, and then you have to pay off that for the rest of your life. You can literally get like a home mortgage for that price. When are you getting married? Um, I, I think I have a few questions in here, like if I have a girlfriend or not. When are you getting married? Uh, I don't know. When I find the right one. At the moment, my lifestyle doesn't really uh, link up with anyone, everyone's back at home or something, but if I meet someone traveling, if I meet maybe an Indian girl, I don't really care like where they're from, but it's just like if you get along with them. A lot of people ask me, will I um, marry like an Indian girl? I mean, maybe, it depends on like their personality and just how I get along with them. I don't really care where they're from, it just matters about how they are as a human, if they have good qualities, so uh, yeah. If you're out there and you think you have good qualities, send me a message on Instagram. <laughs> I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, when I find the right person, I'll get married, which may happen in a week, maybe five years. But traveling solo is pretty boring, guys, so uh, it's pretty miserable. <laughs> do, do you still have pains in your injured area? This is actually a really good question. I'll run through a little bit about my hand. So, as many of you know, my hand got blown up by a firecracker. I lost my middle finger, this one, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you can see that bump there, that's my middle finger. And I'm gonna have another surgery in a few months back in Australia to like reduce that bone there. Also, I fixed like my ring finger because that's the most I can lift it up. So they need to like do something with the tendon. And also, there's a bit of scar there that they need to remove. Well, it's very hard to show. Um, but yeah, so pretty much my middle finger nerve was rewired through to my thumb because my thumb was blown up. It was literally on the back of my hand. Um, so when I touch my thumb, I'm still regaining sensation, but it feels like someone is like touching my middle finger, which has got to be like right now. It's like someone is doing that on my middle finger. It's like one of the most bizarre like feelings ever. Uh, this uh, this side is fine, um, but yeah, it's mainly that weird feeling of my middle finger being touched, even though I don't have a middle finger. And like when I hit it, it feels like my middle finger, and. Uh, yeah, it's just really w weird. What else is there? That's about it. Because, <laughs> like, there's no pain. It's just like, oh, actually, there's like this little bit of, um, on one side of my finger. Oh, this is not focusing. Come on. That side is all scar tissue because they took, like, a skin graft from my leg. So I can't feel all that side. It just is nothing. But I can feel that side. So that's sort of difficult because I can't feel the tip. And I can't feel the, like, no, it's really hard to explain. When you don't have 100% feeling, it's really hard to like use these for small things. Like it's very hard to pick things up because you don't know how much pressure to apply and you don't know if it's like sort of slipping because it's like something that you won't be able to understand until you are in my situation because feeling is just something that I didn't realize was so important for like everyday use. 
but yeah, <laughs> no like really bad pains. Just uh, just this weird uh, like ghost pain sometimes. Will you settle in Kerala in the near future? Wait, this is about to hit 15 minutes. I think it stops recording. Let me just stop it real quick and then start again. All right, we're back. <laughs> um, will you settle in Kerala in the near future? Uh, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to settle. I love traveling around, so if I'm like settled in somewhere, it means that I'm going to be living there. And I can't see myself really living in one specific location. I mean, I can't see myself doing that yet. But maybe when I find the right person, if I marry an Indian girl, a Kerala girl, a Malu, then I maybe we'll settle here. But I just want to keep traveling, see what happens. But uh, yeah, I don't really have any plans for the future because I don't know what's happening, you know? I don't even know what's going to happen next week. Why is this going out of focus? Alright, Lamborghini or Porsche? Definitely Lambo. Lamborghini for sure. New York or Kerala? Definitely Kerala. New York is actually like, I haven't been there, but people say it's like not that fun. It's expensive. It's uh, weather is random. It like snows and then it's like 50 degrees sometimes. It's just really weird. Apparently people are really like toxic and all they think about is like money and just like doing their own thing. But uh, hey, that's just what I've been told. I'm not gonna judge until I've actually experienced it. But of course, it's a cool place. It's different. But uh, yeah. Do you have a girlfriend? No, I don't because um, I don't think that having a girlfriend and living the lifestyle that I do, like always traveling, is very uh, efficient. Like it's not really gonna work out. I'm always working like in my hotel or filming a video, I'm always doing something so it's hard to like make time for other people that like if I'm in a relationship, you know, that's like time out of my like YouTube videos. But I mean, as I said, the right person hasn't popped up yet. If the right person pops up, then uh, maybe I have a girlfriend. What was the reaction of your friends in Australia when they saw your injury? Um, they were shocked. I had actually, when the injury had happened and we were on the hos uh, in the car going to the hospital, I actually sent them a video and I was like, oh, this is about to run out of battery. Crap. All right. Let me get a battery real quick, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. <laughs> we are back. We've charged a little bit. There's a good chance that it's going to uh, die again because it only charged for about uh, 15 minutes. But where was I? I think that we were talking about, let me find... The, uh, the question, my friend's reaction. So, pretty much, I had sent them a video in the car with my hand blown up and I was like, I didn't get my hand in the shot, but I was, I was calm, I was just like, this literally has changed my whole life. I'll play the clip now. This has changed my whole life. Remember this video, boys. I sent that to them and uh, pretty much, they didn't know what had happened, they thought like I'd just seen something cool. I didn't respond for like two days. Then obviously my parents like told them all what had happened. I didn't have access to my phone for about two days because I was in ICU where you're not allowed to like have phones or anything. It's like where all the like really serious patients go. But uh, yeah, so eventually I got in contact with them a few days later. But they had called each other and I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, this is crazy. Obviously, they like sent me messages and called me after when I could uh, respond. But yeah, they were shocked. They like, I mean, no one really expects that to happen to anyone that they know. So they were just shocked. Um, after the accident, did your relatives or friends, were they angry on Karthik? Well, no, I wasn't angry. My parents weren't angry. It's an accident. And I don't really think that uh, like being angry, like regardless, what of what happened, like, it's crap that it happened, but being angry when we're in the hospital doesn't really get me out of the hospital and fix my hand. It doesn't really benefit anyone to be angry. It just creates like more tension and more shitty vibes, you know? But uh, yeah, so no one was really angry. It's like my fault for being stupid and stuff. But yeah. Rate Kerala on a scale of one to 10. Uh, like a thousand? <laughs> um. Uh, we're on low battery again. Not good, guys. How long will you stay in Kerala? I'm thinking from now, I'll be here maybe for another few weeks. And then I want to explore, like, the rest of India. Obviously, I'll come back to Kerala. This is, like, my second home. 
But uh, yeah, a lot of people have also been commenting saying they want to see like other parts of India and other parts of their country. So yeah, we'll check out the rest of India as well and we can see what happens. When will you be back again in Trivandrum? I will be back just before I fly out, I think. I think that I'll see my doctor, I'll see all the, Car the Kartik and all the boys back at uh, TVM. But uh, yeah, I think maybe when I fly out, and then that's sort of in the east coast, so it's a lot closer to uh, Australia than uh, when I fly. But then again, I might, I don't even know guys, seriously. I might be in Nepal, I might be in Sri Lanka, I have no idea. This is crazy. How did you and Kartik become friends? So pretty much, obviously I have a lot of Mellow subscribers, so they were like, hey, you're in Trivandrum, hang out with Kartik. I sent him a message, and he uh, he responded a few days later, but unfortunately I had left to uh, go to Kanya Kamari. So then I uh, went back home for a few months, or no, like a month, and uh, we had been messaging, I told him like, yo, like, let's hang out, I'm coming back to Trivandrum soon. And uh, yeah, so we hung out the first day, had a really fun time, went to Ponyamudi uh, Falls, unfortunately it was closed, but um, then obviously the next day we hung out on Diwali and yeah, that happened and we just became close from that because obviously when you go through such like an incident, we spent a lot of time in hospital together because he was always there and uh, yeah, obviously just we became close after that. <laughs> Convey our regards to your parents. They are the real heroes, always supporting your dreams. That is so true, literally. I mean, I could have had parents that wanted me to go to university or college and like take like the sort of normal approach to life, you know, get a normal job. But thankfully, my parents were really understanding of what I want to do. So uh, shout out to you, mum and dad. Can you call a meetup for us? Yes, I'm doing a meetup in Kochi. Be, uh, stay tuned for that, I'll be doing that maybe within the week after you see this video and then also when I'm back in Trivandrum I'll do one as well. <laughs> when are you back to Sydney? Uh, I think in about three to four months uh, because I need to have another surgery on my um, on my hand so I need to go back. Do you have any girlfriend? No, as I said, I don't. Yeah, single life. <laughs> are you planning to visit any other city in India? Yeah, definitely. As I said, Mumbai, North East, I'll go to Delhi for a bit. Maybe, uh, you know, check out a lot of places. What's your education quali qualification? Uh, I am a high school graduate. So I finished high school. <laughs> but yeah, I get this question a lot from people. Like, what is your qualification? Because in Australia, like, I know in India, it's like, you finish high school, you go to university no matter what. Like, it's needed. You can't get a job without a degree. Like, it's just something in India that you have to have a, uh, a degree in, in something. But in Australia, it's not as necessary. There are other forms of uh, getting like work. I mean, there's this, uh, these things called apprenticeships where people like learn how to like do plumbing, building, like mechanic stuff as well. And they get paid like a lot of money when they finish their four year degree. Like I'm talking like $100,000 plus. So uh, yeah, for those people that don't really like have the brains, they can use like their skills uh, elsewhere in TAFE and learn about like a, a specific skill such as like building and stuff like that. So it's not as necessary in Australia as well. You can just like get like a job at a bar maybe, get like $20 an hour and slowly work your way up through. Take number three, with <laughs> I had to charge it again. Oh my God, I really should have prepared for this. I didn't charge any of my camera batteries. I haven't used this camera for Oh, I haven't used it in months. But what I was saying previously was that uh, in Australia, it's not really necessary for a uh, for a university degree. As I said, you can get a job at a bar. Like you work really hard, like do extra things and make your boss happy. You get like a management position, just work hard with that, and you slowly keep moving up the ranks, and you get a lot more opportunities. So that's uh, one possibility of uh, not getting a degree. But as I went through all the other possibilities. It's not really necessary to uh, have a degree in uh, anything really in Australia. Let's uh, find these uh, the rest of these questions. Um, how's life been so far? I mean, I can't complain. Look, I'm traveling to India. It's awesome. I'm making vlogs. You guys are enjoying them. I mean, obviously, I uh, am 
been through a fair bit with this hand injury. But, uh, you know, as I said, I could be in a way worse position, so I'm grateful for that. What music do you listen to? Do you have a Spotify playlist? I, uh, I just like sort of hip-hop music, just whatever's trending. Also, just like chill vibes. There's also this artist called Pofu that I'm listening to now. P-O-W-F-U. He's like a, a really chill rapper. He's got like the nicest music ever. But uh, yeah, that's the music that I listen to. I change it up. And I also sort of like like the uh, like 2010 like classic music, if that makes any sense. I don't know. I change it up. And I have a Spotify playlist, but I don't think it's on public. It's just like my playlist. Track coaches, water transportation at Ernaklam Boat Jetty. I have done that before, but I also am here in Aleppo right now, but I want to uh, use the boat service here because I can't believe there's government boats like that are like buses, but on the water and they take you all through the backwaters. That's just so cool. So we're going to be doing a video of that very shortly, uh, probably on uh, when I... When I leave here to catch a train, I need to uh, catch it from the like, Alapuza town. So I uh, will uh, go on the bus. Oh, I just called it a bus. <laughs> the bloody the boat, the uh, government boat there into town and uh, catch a train from there. What do you do when you feel blue? I saw this question and I'm like, I'm gonna add this because it actually, uh, I, I sort of have to think for a second. I think. If no one knows, blue means like if you're feeling down or like depressed, etc. I feel there's a lot of times when I'm traveling that I feel that way because I'm obviously by myself. Things like get tough at times. But I think I just go and respond to some messages and you guys make it all better because the messages that I receive every day are just amazing. It, uh, it's just really like overwhelming how much support I can get. So if I'm ever feeling down, I just respond to a message and you know, it makes me feel better. But also like meditation sometimes, just like listening to music and just chilling out. But uh, yeah, usually I just respond to some uh, messages and that hopefully uh, helps me with my uh, blueness. Do you believe in a soulmate? Um, I don't really know. I don't. I don't think that. I think like everyone has. There's not like one specific person in the world that one person needs to be with. But I believe that like if you have a good connection with someone, then sure that's a soulmate. Oh, we're on the next batch of questions. Any plan to visit the Maldives? Yes, definitely. Not anytime soon, no. I want to stay in India. And uh, Maldives is really expensive. It's a hot tourist destination. But there's obviously also like Lak Lakshwadeep Island, which is very similar to the Maldives. Beautiful oceans beautiful vibe, beautiful beaches, so like, I may as well go there, it's in India, it's just off the coast of Kerala, but uh, yeah, it's a lot cheaper than the Maldives, so, I mean, I think I might visit there before I go to the Maldives, just because it's so touristy, it's so expensive, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Look, money eventually, everything comes down to money when you come traveling, the things that allow me to travel is money, so I don't really want to go blow my money on very expensive accommodation in the Maldives while drinking martinis. Well, actually, I won't drink martinis, so I don't drink. <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean. You've got to be like conscious of the money you spend when you're traveling. What was your inspiration to start your channel? I think I've answered this question like three times in here, but it was just like seeing people live an awesome life traveling. So I was like, yo, let's do that. And uh, yeah, made it happen. Uh, Kanoor, when? In a few weeks I'll be in Kanoor. I think I'm just playing. That's uh, that, saying that. Alright. Will you show your family in your vlogs? My uh, my family are in a few of my vlogs. I did the Q&A, the 50,000 subscriber special with my uh, parents. They also, like, a couple of my Life in Australia videos have them. And not, like, a lot of them. Just I don't really like bringing them into my videos just because... You know, it's social media. There's, you guys are awesome, but there's always like a couple people that leave nasty comments. So I just don't really want to bring them into like my sort of life because I don't really want them getting offended by, you know, <laughs> mean comments. But uh, you know what I mean. There's always like five dislikes on my videos for some reason. I don't know why, but it's just the internet foil. Would you be open to act in Indian movies? Yes, like I would actually be down to do an Indian movie. I suck at acting, but I'm sure I can like pull something off. What's your thoughts on being stared in Indian streets? 
look, I think it's just like, it's totally different to uh, Australia for that matter. Like sort of staring in Australia is considered rude. So you just have to get used to it here. I know it's not really rude. So you just gotta get that like, used to the different culture. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Like people just like continually looking at you. But if I can, I like can sort of see that they're looking. So I just like start staring at them back and then like, just keep staring until they look away, it's just like a fun game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it wasn't really, an I it's not really an issue for me, I don't really find it annoying or anything, it's just part of the culture, they don't like mean any harm, they're just curious to what I'm doing. And often I'm holding a camera, so that's even more curiosity, so I get stared at probably like the most out of all tourists, because I'm walking around with a camera and uh, walking the streets in often not very travelled areas, so yeah, it doesn't really bother me, but I just understand it's like part of the uh, part of India. You just got to deal with it, you know. But it's not really an issue. Will you marry someone from Kerala or Australia? I don't know. It's not really that's the uh, location of the person that I marry is not really a uh, a key determination factor of who I'm going to marry. I just got to get along with them and be happy with them, you know. What's your plans after vlogging? Uh, I don't know, I really want to sort of get into like public speaking a little bit because like speaking on stage really scares me and it sort of makes me want to work towards that because I know it's like a bit of a fear of mine so if I can overcome that then that's happy something that I've worked towards and yeah, it'd just be cool to chat to people about my life and everything I just like being on camera, talking to people and you know, spreading positive vibes so hopefully that can be worked on in the future can we expect a vlog with A.B. de Villiers again? If you guys don't remember my uh, first trip to Kerala, I was chatting with a guy called Chris. He looked like A.B. de Villiers. But uh, yeah, we still talk and he's in the process of trying to plan a trip to India in the next few months. So be on the lookout for that. We might get the uh, Chris and Luke duo back. But uh, also, we went on Instagram Live today, or uh, tonight. And uh, he was live there, so a lot of people were like, yo, what's up, Chris? Because they hadn't seen him for a long time. But, uh, yeah. Okay, next question. I am also a 19-year-old boy. Ain't good with schools or anything. What should I search for in my life? I think you should just search for happiness. Forget about money and just be like, what makes you happy? Like, maybe play video games, you know. What is, like, your passion? And just work towards that. And like, hopefully you can build a business out of that and earn money because, um, you know, and I'm sure you're not like bad at everything. There's going to be something that you're good at. I don't really know much information from just the question, but uh, yeah, I think you should just seek for happiness because at the end of the day, like if you're not happy doing the job that you're doing, maybe you're like an engineer and you're not happy, then uh, there's really like, what's the point in being an engineer? if you're not happy, <laughs> if you hate going to work every day, like, it just makes no sense. What if a girl from India loves you? Well, uh, she loves me then, I don't know. If I love, like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll love her back, it depends who she is. As I, This literally all comes down to if I get along with a person, then I'll, like, be with them, you know, if I have good vibes and good energies with them, you know. But, uh, yeah, I get a lot of messages of people asking me to marry them and stuff. So it's quite funny. When will you come back to Trivandrum? Hopefully uh, at the very end of my trip and I'll see my doctor. Imagine, oh, I saw this question and I literally had no idea what the answer was going to be. So I need to think of this. Imagine that one day God appeared to you. What are the two needs you ask to God? I literally don't know what I'd ask. I'd probably, maybe I'd ask like, what religion is actually right? You know, because there's so many religions in the world that like and you know one of them's wrong okay <laughs> but like I'd probably ask that and then oh see this is a question that really boggles me I don't know I just ask like maybe I'll ask how do I find like eternal happiness yeah I'd probably do that which religion is the real one and uh, how do I find eternal happiness because you know everyone just wants to be happy at the end of the day how do you finance your travels? Um, well, so pretty much I worked, uh, I finished school, right, when I was 18 in uh, November. I worked all the way from November to uh, May uh, as a removalist, someone 
that uh, picks up all the furniture from houses when someone's moving, puts it all in a truck, and then drops it off at the new house. So it's like a really hard, intensive labor job. So we got paid really well. I saved a lot of money. I also was like just selling random things on eBay. Just like I was really good at just like making money out of like really obscure like ways. <laughs> so I'd always like instead of going out and drinking on the weekend, I'd go and give my friends lifts and get like 20 bucks from them, you know. So I also didn't spend like any money. All I had to do was pay rent at my parents' place and then like $30 on fuel a week because I had to drive to work. But apart from that, I wouldn't eat out at all because it's more expensive. I'd eat at home. But um, yeah, so I have a lot of money that I saved up. And then now, thankfully, that I have this like YouTube channel, I'm earning money from ad revenue. And then also like these places I can stay at for free in exchange for a promotion on like my Instagram and YouTube. So you'll be seeing a lot of hotels and stuff uh, being like showed on this uh, on this channel in the future because these guys are giving me the free accommodation in exchange for promotion. And they're pretty cool places. Like I wouldn't promote like a place that I wouldn't stay at. You know, these are actually like really cool places that I think you guys might enjoy if you're in the area. So uh, yeah, that's how I find my travels now. Don't you miss your family? Yes, I definitely do. And it, it like, it's a different, like, kind of feeling. Like, it wasn't a feeling that I had felt on my last trip this time. Like, you know, I don't know. I miss my friends, my family, and just, like, little things, as I said before. Tim Tam or Samosa? I read this question literally before I had uh, dinner tonight. And I, my mouth was just watering because Tim Tams are a sweet, samosa is like a savory snack. And oh, I just like, I'd have like Tim Tams on this side, samosas on this side, boom, 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 just eating that food. Like, and there's no tomorrow. They, I think that's like got to be like one of the best combos ever. Like a really nice, warm, crispy, oh, samosa, nice pack of Tim Tams. But like, it. They're totally different things, so I couldn't choose one. Like, maybe I want a sweet for today, so I'd go the Tim Tam, but sometimes... I thought that was a telephone. <laughs> sometimes I want, like, a savory snack, so I'd go the samosa. So it really just depends on what I'm feeling for the day. Luke Alia, do you have plans to visit North Indian states? Yes, I will be in Delhi, hopefully, and uh, meet up with Car Rock, maybe, and check out Delhi. And, uh, you know, I haven't visited Rajasthan. Obviously, Himachal Pradesh is amazing during the summer. So that's, like, beautiful up there. So I might visit there. But I don't have a plan, guys. As you know, it's just see what happens, eh? Can we meet? Suggest some tips for beginners in vlogging. And please motivate me for vlogging in public. I think... Uh, I say this a lot, if you want to start a YouTube channel, you just got to start, you just got to keep uploading videos, you got to be consistent and uh, just keep uploading videos. I mean, I think content is like the key, you just keep uploading videos and you don't know what video is going to go viral, so that's why I upload a video every day, just because you guys want it and then also the potential. I, I think some of my videos are like the best videos ever, but they go bad in terms of views, which I actually don't care about. I don't really care about views or subscribers because it's just another, like, a number. But, um, yeah, in terms of, like, I think things are going to go viral, but they don't. But then, like, the most random video that I don't expect to go viral gets, like, 500,000 views. So you literally don't know. So you can't think in terms of what you think is going to go viral because at the end of the day, you're not watching a video. The audience is watching the video. Uh, and vlogging in public, you just got to do it. I mean, you just got to realize, like, this is your dream. You want to be a vlogger. Are you really going to let the opinions of other people, the people that you don't even know in the street, are you going to let their opinions dictate your life, you know? Um, I find it hard sometimes to vlog, especially after this, like, hand accident. My anxiety has sort of gone up a fair bit. I just, like, am not as confident as I used to be, so I'm still like in the beginning stages again of vlogging, so at times I get a little bit uncomfortable vlogging, but uh, you know, stuff we just have to work towards at the uh, through our life. Do you like to settle in India in the future? As I said, I don't know where I'm going to settle. I want to keep traveling and then something pops up, an opportunity 
pops up where I have to settle somewhere, let's do it. But India's a lovely place. If I was to settle in India, it'd be in Kerala, it'd be in the mountains, far away from just everyone. I'd just love to live in the mountains and just like practice like a martial arts. Why is that going red? Let me restart this recording real quick, guys. This camera doesn't like to film for like too long. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I really want to go like off the grid and go for a few months up into like the mountains and just like practice a martial art. That's like something that I really want to do in the next couple of years. But obviously now that my like life is sort of on YouTube, I need access to social media, which at times can be very like toxic. I feel like maybe during this trip I am going to take a break, maybe just for a week and just like refresh because I spend like, I think, let me check my daily time on uh, my screen time. My daily, oh my, my daily average on my phone, look at that guys. How do I are? 10 hours and 15 minutes per day. Can you believe that? Why is it not focusing? Hello. 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 Focus. Focus, focus. 10 hours a day, yo. And that's just on my phone. I edit videos. I like, that's actually awful. That's shocking, guys. 10 hours. That's almost half of a day. I sleep for like, well, let's just say nine hours, all right? Nine hours plus 10 hours. That's nine to five of my hours is not spent on book. That's actually scary. Wow. This is what I mean, guys. This is, the, the technology is just taking over. This is, that's really scary. <laughs> um, do you still feel like you're in it you're in an alien place while you're in Kerala? Definitely not. I'm so comfortable with traveling Kerala now. I understand like how the transport works, I understand the people, I know a little bit of the language. Yeah, it's very comfortable to travel Kerala. But I was thinking about that. Maybe when I travel like to new countries, it's gonna be so different. Like I'm not gonna know the prices of things over there, I'm not gonna know the language. Like, you know, it's going to be scary when I go to new places. But, you know, hopefully uh, the rest of India is pretty... I think the rest of India is pretty similar. Focus, yo. This camera's acting really weird tonight. Can you, like, work? <laughs> Please. <laughs> you working? Yeah, you good? Alright, sweet. What's the worst thing you see in India? I think one of the saddest things I've seen is whenever I see a dog and I go to, like, pet it, like pat it, it gets really scared as if like I'm gonna punch it. So I think that like indicates that it's been like bashed or like hit in the previous like, you know, in its life. So that's pretty sad to see like when you go to like pat a dog and it flinches because they're obviously like traumatized by some previous experience. That's pretty sad to see. And then like of course like there's lots of beggars here and like a lot of like poor people on the street and you know it's really like sad to see and it's like really shocking but uh, it's just part of life you know it's it's like it's just sad I don't really know what else to say how do you chase your passion do you face lots of problems while chasing your passion of course you're gonna go through like good stages bad stages you know there's lots of problems that I encounter every day a lot of problems comes down to bloody finding good Wi-Fi because I need to upload a video every day but you know, just little things, you know. But uh, that's just my like sort of passion. Like, if you have a passion of, uh, I don't know, what's your passion? Let's just think. Like, getting a, a degree. Of course, you're gonna go through like parts where you have to study for like five hours a day and then have exams. And you like life is just all about little hurdles that you're gonna get over, and you just gotta keep pushing through, and then eventually the rewards will come. Are you scared to travel alone? How are you managing your travels? Are you going for higher studies? Uh, no, I'm not scared to travel alone. Not in India at all. There's obviously places that I'll be uncomfortable to travel with in the rest of the world, but I'd still go there and learn a little bit about it and then we'll be fine. I think the best way to, uh, to learn is just experience it. There's a lot of scams like in the north of India, especially when I was there. Thankfully, I haven't been scammed in like Kerala at all, which is bloody awesome. You guys are so sick. But um. In the north, I think 
oh, this is sounding so bad now. I feel like I'm taking shots at the North. I, like, I haven't seen enough of the North to even make, like, a, a good... Like, I can't review it, but the time that I was there, obviously there's more foreigners, so there's more scammers coming in. There's scammers in every country, though. But, uh, yeah, the, the way that I learnt the scams is by getting scammed. So you have to get scammed to, uh, to learn, and then you don't get scammed from then on, if that makes sense. But, oh, I, I feel like I just talked a lot of crap on North India. I love North India as well, like, North India is really cool, it's so different, and that's the cool thing about India, is literally every state is like, a different country, they speak a different language, different foods, different people, it's just awesome. So, I love North India as well, and I'm gonna go visit there later on in this trip, so uh, don't get offended anyone, you know, I don't want to make you guys upset. <laughs> How much money do you need to start traveling? Uh, look, I think if you want to... Uh, let's just... Because I know India very well, I'm going to give a quick little rundown. When I was here on my first trip, I was averaging maybe 20 Australian dollars a day, which is about 1,000 rupees. That's staying in hostels, eating street food, you know, catching local buses, local trains. That's just like the uh, bare minimum. Uh, of course, you can do it a lot cheaper than that, but it does get uncomfortable. And especially with my lifestyle, I need like an area to work in. I need Wi-Fi. So now I'm I'm spending a bit more to fund because I need that like comfort of working, like and Wi-Fi. But thankfully, I get a lot of things for free here. But um, yeah, you also got to take into account travel insurance, which I just have to have because you never know what happens. You know, luckily I had insurance for this, so. The medical bills were like maybe over like ten thousand dollars in Kim's hospital, and uh, they covered all of it. So always travel with travel insurance. It's relatively cheap. I think I got like four months on this um, on this trip for about three hundred Australian dollars, and uh, you know you got to take into account flights as well. If you get an opportunity to settle in Kerala, would you? Yeah, for sure, definitely. When are you coming to Slovenia? I don't even know where Slovenia is. I'm guessing it's like Eastern Europe, maybe near Slovakia, Slovakia or somewhere like that. But hey, maybe Europe is on the cards. We'll see what happens. You know, the best part is that I have like so many Malus now across the world. People message me like from like pretty much every country, and it's like, yo, I could go there and just hang with you guys. That's just sick ass. How do you deal with the uncertainty of travel and being in unfamiliar situations? I just work it all out along the way. I mean, there's obviously a, a lot of uncomfort traveling because you don't know your surroundings, you don't really know uh, where you're going and stuff, but you know, I just, uh, you just have to deal with it. There's literally no other like option. What is, what's your alternative? You are, uh, you don't travel because travel is all about uncertainties and learning about new environments, new cultures and stuff like that. What is the most exciting thing about traveling solo? I think it's just the fact that you are in control of whatever you want to do. If you want to go for a walk, you can go for a walk. If you want to go somewhere, you can go. You don't have any restrictions. If I want to catch a train to, I don't know, 10 hours that way, I can do it. Like, I'm not really restricted to anything. Just got to pack my bags and we're on the train. So that's probably the, like, the most exciting part. There's, like, nothing holding me back. Do you think your accident while the fire, with the firecracker made you more focused and clear of your goal? That's actually a really good question. I think, yeah, definitely. I think being at home for like three months, not really being able to travel or anything, really made me know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to come back to India and film vlogs. I knew I wanted to travel because it was like the first time that I hadn't been able like physically I wasn't able to do something because I had to stay in Australia for rehabilitation and stuff and usually I'm physically fit you know so I can do whatever I want when I want but this was the first experience in which I physically wasn't able to do something so it really put like my uh, my goals and my dreams sort of like laser vision I know what I want I know what I want to do and we're gonna get there and uh, yeah that's a really good question do you think processing visa in Australia is faster than in India? Uh, probably not. <laughs> depends what country you're from. It depends on a lot of very, uh, like a lot of uh, very. Uh, what's the word? Factors. A lot of factors. <laughs> so, like, do you mean maybe e visa or like 
a permanent visa. I mean, my visa into India is an e-visa. It was really quick. It happened in a few days. But uh, if I want like perma permanent, uh, that permanent citizenship, that'll take forever. I don't even know if I'm eligible for that. But I also think Australia has very strict immigration laws, so you may have to wait. And I was talking to someone, it actually like works out as like a score system. If you have like a master's in something or like a bachelor's, you get more points for that. If you have like family in Australia, you get more points for that. If you, you know, it's all down to a point system, which is kind of sad, but you know, just the way Australia is, but it's a beautiful country. So I really suggest if you can get the opportunity to uh, work there or study there, definitely. It just gives you like a new, a new life of uh, like you get to experience new culture just like I am here in India. Is there any difference between Australia and India? Not the culture, but other than that. Yeah, definitely. There's differences between like every single country. Like India and Australia are so different, just like India and America are so different and Australia and France are so different. The people are different, the foods are different, obviously transport is different. I mean, I can't like, there's everything's different. It's just a whole different world in other countries. But uh, yeah. Ooh, last question. No. How long is this video? Oh, this is a lengthy video. What pre pre uh, that what preparation did you did when you were planning to come to Kerala? How you feel so far? I did uh, zero preparation. The only thing I did was book a flight and one night accommodation in Trivandrum. That was my planning, and then we figure the rest of out <laughs> rest of it out from there. That's how I roll. Just because I don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know. And how you feel so far? I'm loving my time here. It's awesome to be here vlogging. I'm happy. And uh, yeah, 100,000 subscribers. How can I complain about that? That's awesome, guys. But that's the last, um, the last question we got. This has been a pretty lengthy video, but I sort of love just like sitting down and like chatting about things and stuff like that. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let's pick this camera up. I haven't vlogged with this camera for a long time. I can see myself. Oh, that's really clear. I can like see myself in the uh, in the camera as well. This is pretty cool. Should I vlog with this, guys? It doesn't have like the stabilization that my uh, other camera does have. Hmm, maybe we'll give it a shot. But uh, yeah, that's the Q&A, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Honestly, 100,000 subscribers has been like a dream of mine for like years. I've made videos on YouTube for a few years. I've only just started traveling and made videos. But it's been like an awesome journey so far. I need to thank you guys just for everything. Thank you for the support and it's a bug. Oh, look at this, look at this fly. He's big. Can you guys see that? <laughs> I guess, I think I have ADHD. <laughs> Anyways, I think, uh, yeah, I need to thank you guys so much for the support. And yeah, we're just gonna keep on vlogging, keep on showing our travels throughout India. So uh, everybody, thank you so much for watching. As always, chase your dreams and we will see you in the next video.